So it seems you all like it when I talk about animation. And you're in luck, because that's what I'm talking about today. I love Invincible. At the time of writing this, season two is just wrapping up, and I, for one, am loving the new season. For those who don't know, Invincible is a show following the adventures of a teenage superhero named Mark Grayson, aka Invincible. He's the son of a superhero named Omni-Man and wants to follow in his footsteps. His adventures lead him into all sorts of challenges, not just as a superhero, but in his personal relationships and a mystery surrounding his father. Without giving anything away, season two has been a pretty great follow-up to the first season so far. I do get a little overwhelmed at times, though, with the amount of characters and plot lines happening, but overall, all, I'm excited to see where it goes. And even though I could gush all day about Invincible, it's not what I want to talk about this whole time because a thought came to me as I was watching the show, something I haven't felt in a lot of adult animated series. I felt good afterwards. Now what do I mean by that? Invincible is a show that can take you on an emotional roller coaster at times, and it's no stranger to tackling serious issues or themes. But there is something at the core of this show that I felt in only a couple other adult animated series, some form of optimism. I know that sounds kind of corny, but stick with me. So me and many other fans of animation have probably heard this over 10 trillion times in our lifetime. You like animation, but that's made for kids. Oh, how I hate this statement with every fiber of my being. For some reason, there's this huge stigma in the industry and culture in general that animation is a thing made for children, probably because starting out, animation was mostly for children. Things like Disney or Looney Tunes catered to younger demographics and thus limited people's perception for decades of what you could do with the medium. And even now, Nowadays, when studios make a horrific piece of objective garbage, they'll just brush it off by saying, who cares, it's just for kids. Not only is this incredibly insulting to children's intelligence, but it's also insulting to the art form itself. Now this debate has been a thing fans of animation have been arguing for decades, but I want to bring up another stigma, or I guess trend, I've seen surrounding another form of animation, adult animation. What I mean is animation intended for a mature audience. When I say this, there's a vast array of shows and movies that come to mind, but when you ask your average Joe, they might say something like Family Guy or The Simpsons. Now, even though I enjoy these shows just as much as the next guy, I'm always baffled that properties like these are always the go-to answer for many in society when we ask what a good adult animated show is. The genre seems to be reduced to essentially raunchy comedies, much like children's animation is reduced to slapstick type comedy. I want to mention though that there's been many milestones in breaking this glass ceiling over animation. Many shows millennials and Gen Z grew up with, like Batman the Animated Series or Avatar The Last Airbender, have pushed the boundaries for what children's animation could be, tackling serious and heavy subjects with more grace and nuance than most live action shows. And the same goes for adult animation during this time. though. I think that was mostly due to Eastern Animation Studios. We've come a long way in terms of breaking these stigmas, and yet I still feel there's a disturbance in the force when it comes to adult animation. And it's mostly due to this. Dr. Eagle Touch. <laughs> Over the 2010s, I would say adult animated shows were coming out left and right due to streaming services. And I don't know about you guys, but I think there is far too much awful stuff that is out there. Shows like Big Mouth, Farzar, etc. Basically anything Netflix has made. Seriously, what's the deal? These shows are pure degeneracy, and I for one am disgusted by it. It's not being edgy or saying something of substance like The Boondocks or South Park. Even though it tries to tackle interesting subjects from time to time, it's mostly just gross stuff for the sake of it. On the other side of that coin, however, there's also been a rise of a different kind of bad. That of the bitter, meta, and pessimistic kind. Examples that seem to have blown the internet into a frenzy over the last couple years were the shows Santa Inc. and Velma. These shows have been torn to shreds, but Velma in particular really got under my skin. Velma is a show that not only comes across as a mean-spirited ego project for Mindy Kaling, but it will straight up insult adults who watch animation. You know what 420 is, right? It's code for adults who still watch cartoons. It's a show that is constantly self-aware of itself and treats its audience like crap most most of the time. It actively sets out to cause division. Same goes for Santa Inc. While it didn't break the fourth wall like Velma did, it still carried the same snarky pessimistic attitude to the audience. I think a big reason as to why this bleak and meta type humor became so popular was because of the adult swim show Rick and Morty. I love this show. At least it's first three seasons or so. It was a complete game changer in the field of adult animation, 
setting up an interesting premise, exploring complex themes, and telling an engaging story with interesting setups. So many shows after its success have been trying to copy its style. But over the years, it's no secret Rick and Morty has been on a downward spiral. While it could be blamed on the quality of the writing, new voice actors, or the toxic wasteland that was the fandom, season by season, people are checking out. The moment I began to check out of the show was a little after season 5. For me at least, I became tired of Rick and Morty because of the thematic premise it was essentially founded upon, which in simplest terms is the belief that nothing matters. I think this premise, while it propelled its popularity, also became the reason for its downfall. When the show became so obsessed with subverting traditional motifs of science fiction and storytelling through a pessimistic view, it's no wonder the writers struggled to find any form of direction to take the series. It also doesn't help that for almost an entire season they basically made fun of fans for theorizing where the show was going. As I said earlier though, I know the fandom has been less than stellar in years past. I'm Tangle Rick! What will all the dumb dumb? I'm Tangle Rick! But when you actively start to hate on your audience and subvert interesting storylines just to piss them off, you can't be surprised when people start to have enough. On the bright side though, over the past couple years, I've seen a backlash to this type of media. Whether it be the depraved toilet humor of Big Mouth, or the meta snarkiness of a Rick and Morty. And while we aren't there yet, I can see there's some form of light at the end of this tunnel. This brings me around to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video when I said there's been some shows over the past couple of years that have been able to break through the mold of adult animation stereotypes. While we've seen some crap, I would also argue there's been some of the best adult animation has to offer. There are shows that not only break stereotypes of adult animation, but others who utilize them to make inspirational pieces of art. Some examples are shows like Hasbun Hotel, which I've discussed on this channel before. While there are the usual cliches of adult animation present in there, at its core, it's about hope and how one could change for the better if they want to. Another example is Smiling Friends on Adult Swim. I know this show is filled to the brim with surrealist random dark humor, but the hook of the show is about these guys who are on a genuine mission to help people feel better and be optimistic about life. In terms of more serious shows, there's Invincible which I mentioned earlier, though that kills two birds with one stone, not only saving adult animation but superhero media as well. Even though Mark is constantly beaten to a pulp throughout the series, he always stands his ground, choosing to do the right thing no matter the cost. Now, I completely understand a show can't just rely on its messages to be considered good. You need good writing and filmmaking to accompany it as well. And I'm also not saying there isn't a space to cover more pessimistic ideas, or, you know, do the meta fourth wall breaking type humor. Invincible does it. But when we're constantly inundated with these ideas, it can get pretty strenuous at a point. At least for me it does. I love shows that cover dark aspects of human nature. Animated shows like Arcane or Bojack Horseman do this masterfully. But the reason they work is that they have talented writers who know how to balance the darkness of life along with the good that it brings. I think we're reaching a point in our culture and society where the majority of us are just sick of pessimistic messaging or depraved morality in our entertainment. With things like a crisis of mental health, the economy in shambles, wars, and political unrest happening, the world needs something to inspire us. We need art to inspire us. And I think adult animation is a powerful new avenue to explore in the future. Younger generations, for all their faults and shortcomings, are at least embracing animation as a legitimate art form. It's not all for children, and when it's for adults, it doesn't have to be depraved or a pessimistic comedy. Animation is a way to tell a story. And with shows like these pioneering the way for the next generation and independent artists, I for one can't wait to see what the future of animation will bring us.